Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and attraction forces in Unreal 4. So to get this started, I'm going to right click in the content browser and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty blank template. And then we'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll open it up. Now, before we can talk about the different attraction forces, there's some things we need to set up first. So in a meta update, we need to spawn something. So I'm going to add a spawn rate and I'm going to set that to 50. And then in particle spawn, I want to spawn these particles on a surface. So I'm going to add a sphere location and I'm going to set the sphere radius to be 300. And then under distribution, I'm also going to turn on surface only band thickness. This will make sure that the particles only spawn on the surface of the sphere. And then the last thing we need to do is to change the size of these particles. So in initialize particle, I'm going to come to sprite size mode and we're going to change this to uniform and 10 should be fine as the default. And now we're ready. So there's three different attraction forces we're going to talk about. And each one of these can work with particle spawn and particle update but they have different results in each one of these categories. So for the first one we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna click on the plus icon in particle spawn and I'm gonna look for attract and we want point force. Now once we add this, you're gonna get an error because this module is looking for solve forces and velocity and it's looking for apply initial forces. If you want any of these attractors to work in particle spawn, you need to have both of these modules. So I'm going to click fix issue for apply initial forces and then in particle update I'm going to add solve forces and velocity. And now let's go and take a look at our point force. So by default we're going to have 100 in the force strength and the point force is going to push our particles out. But just the same if we wanted to set this to be a negative number we could do that. So we'll let that play and it'll look like they're being absorbed or sucked in. And then once they reach the center, they'll start to shoot out again. Basically what's going on here is that they're being spawned with an attraction, right? So they're going to continue forward with that attraction force. So just the same, if we wanted to change the force strength to something like a random range float, we can do that. So we can have a minimum of zero and a maximum of 100. And then now, we should have a variety of particles that are just staying behind and the particles that are moving forward. Now, if you wanted to add a curve to this, you could add a curve, but it's not going to work. So in this case, we can take our point force and we can drag it into particle update. And now we can add some keys to our curve. So I'm gonna have a first key that's set at zero and then I'm gonna add another key here and I'll set that to be 100. Hit F to frame it. Then I'm gonna add another key here, about right here, and I'm gonna set this to be negative 100. We'll make these keys a little tighter together. Right here. So they'll change direction pretty fast. And now let's preview this. So they should go out. And then over time, they just start to come back in. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So in this case, you can actually update the attraction force versus in particle spawn, you can only apply that initial force. So let's go take a look at our next one. I'm gonna get rid of point force and we're going to look for that attract again. And we want point attraction force. And now once again, this is looking for apply initial forces and solve forces and velocity. So in this case, this needs to be above apply initial forces. And now we can take a look at it. Now this is pretty similar, but it has a little more fall off control. So we can add a strength just like before. So we can say we want 100. Let's see if that's doing anything yet. And you'll notice that it's not doing anything yet. And the reason for that is the attraction radius. So if we set this to our sphere size, which is like 300, we should see that these are now starting to work, but there's some that aren't being affected. So we would just continue to increase that radius. And now it should affect all of them. 
Now the attraction strength is a little strong, so we'll set this to 20. Let's see what that does. And you can see by default, this point attraction is taking the particles and sucking them in, sucking them into the simulation position. And if you wanted to change the attractor position, you could do that. Or if you wanted a user parameter in here, you could eventually do that as well. And just the same, we can take this into particle update and we can change the strength to a curve. So we can set this to be zero. We'll add another key here and we'll set this value to 20. Frame it, we'll add another key in here. We'll set this to negative 60 and then we'll end a little sooner about here with zero we'll take a look at that so they're being sucked in and then they're being pushed out and then at some point they're slowing down cool now for the last one i'm going to get rid of the point attraction force and I'm gonna come back to particle spawn and I'm gonna add line attraction force. And once again, this needs to be above apply initial forces and we'll let that compile. And basically now, when we let this play, our particles will be attracted to a line. And similar to the other forces, it's going to be attracted to the line and then it's gonna keep on going. So if I just increase the attraction strength a little bit, keep on increasing it to something like 50 or even 100. You can start to see this a little better. And if you wanted to change the start point and the end point, you can do that too. Now, if I take this and put this in particle update, and to show this example a little bit better, instead of using a sphere location, I'm going to use a box location. So in particle spawn, I'll look for box location and I'll leave the box size X at 100, and the Y is going to be, I don't know, two, and the Z will also be two. And I'll just save and let this compile. And now you can see that these are all on a line, right? Because we kind of made this box into a line to begin with. But if we let this play, you'll see that as these particles spawn, they're not leaving this line at all. They're staying within this line and then just wobbling back and forth with an attraction force. Now, if I increase this box size on the Y, say, let's set this to 20, you can see this a little better, right? You can see that they're wobbling back and forth. And if I continue to increase this to say 50 or 60, we see that they're still trying to get attracted to that line from where they're spawned. So they're being attracted to the line, and then the attraction force is pulling them back, constantly trying to get here. Versus in particle spawn, they're gonna be attracted to that point, and then they're gonna keep on going with that force. So we definitely have quite a few different options with these attraction forces, and this is just the beginning, because we can go and set up user parameters, and then use blueprints to drive some of these attraction forces dynamically. But if you guys thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.